I've got a big knob. And I'm not afraid to use it. I've got a big knob and I'm going to tell you about it. So I'm going to go through why I chose the big knob, why I chose the old version, what it does, how to set it up, and then the pros and cons. So yeah, let's start with why the big knob. Um, basically when I was in LA, I worked with a group of people called The Matrix, and they had one in every single one of their studios. Uh, and they've made a lot of one, number one hits, so I became familiar with it just seeing it at theirs. And I've always had a mixing desk and I thought, well, what audio controller should I use? I looked at a few, I looked at the Prezonus one. Um, I looked at an SM Pro Audio one, which is actually here, I haven't even turned it on yet. It might be fantastic, I don't know. Um, and the Mackie, big knobs really. And also Steve Anderson, the dance music DJ producer, gave me his album. I bought the big knob from him because they don't sell this version anymore. Good album from A to B, buy it, he gave me this. So essentially this big knob is, you there's, there's, there's an area where you choose your input, there's an area you choose your output, it's got two headphone sockets, and in the middle is a big knob, which is for volume. Next, why the old one? Basically the new version comes with uh, a couple of inputs which are analog to digital converters. So you can plug in a couple of microphones and send that via USB, I think it's USB, to your computer. I don't need that, I've got a separate interface. I've got an RME Fireface 802 over there. It costs a lot of money. So I don't see the point in me paying for something on uh, a, a volume controller, what do you call it, a control surface that I'm not going to use. Um, and the old one doesn't have that. They're pretty much the same price, so I thought, well, my thoughts are, I would rather pay the same amount for more things I'm going to use rather than, I don't know how much money goes into those converters, but I'm never gonna use them, so, you know. And I'm familiar, this is the one they had in their studio, and I know for a fact Graham Edwards has still got his, like whether or not uh, Scott and Lauren still have theirs, I don't know, but um, yeah. So I know they last a long time, and I don't know how long Steve's had this, but it's still working perfectly. I like Mackie stuff. What does it do? So this is the big knob. Woo! Uh, essentially, you plug in a load of inputs. So for example, your computer that you're working on, the inputs, the left and right, uh, maybe a second computer or input device. Um, I use one for headphones, sorry, headphones and iPhone input effectively. If someone's got some backing tracks or some songs you want to listen to. And then to turn it on, you press these buttons, you select your input. You can have all of them going at the same time. It's just on off switches for your four inputs. And then you go, okay, which outputs do I want? So you can choose three sets of outputs. I've got three sets of monitors. I've got my big monitors, the little monitors, so the big Mackies, the little Fostex. And I've got some terrible old speakers in the next room as another reference. So this room's all acoustically treated, so it sounds nice. And just as a test, I send a signal through a terrible old amp in that room, which is my gym. And it has two speakers stuffed on shelves, not even properly spread apart, just to make sure it sounds all right. So three sets of speakers, two headphone outputs, uh, a few other exciting things you can do. Obviously a massive volume knob in the middle. It's got a mono button, which is cool just for checking your mixes. It's got a mute button, so you can turn everything off. Dim, turns everything down a bit. And there's another level button. This is for the talk back. So it's got a built-in microphone. I'd say this is the only downside of this unit. It's got a built-in microphone, you can't use an external. I don't have a requirement for an external one. And pff, it's sort of a handy thing to have. Uh, and you can choose where to send your talk back so people can hear it. So these are just buttons that they pop back up immediately so you can just talk to the artist and go, that was terrible, do it again, or that was fantastic, nice work. Um, other things I like about this, for the headphones, you can choose whether it comes from one of these sources, so whatever you've got selected here, or you can have your uh, a separate headphone mix sent from your door. So you can send that to here, which is great because sometimes you, the artist or you, generally the artist, doesn't want to hear 
the same mix that's on the computer. So you can send a separate mix to their taste through and you know listen to that which is nice. Again on the back you've got left and rights for every set of monitors. These are all balanced so uh, you know there's a difference between balanced and unbalanced leads. There's no XLRs which is probably one of the downsides but you can send three sets of signals to your monitors here. Choose your volume and this is where you your inputs go and you've got plus four decibels or minus 10 db um, so that's all of that there's the headphone input and there's levels for your sources so i'm going to show you how to set it up i'm going to start with the uh, input section then the outputs uh, and everything else that i use um, so yeah let's start with the door mix which is here the door is the workstation that's sent from the interface, so your left and right outputs, the main mix from your whatever you're using, Logic, Pro Tools, Cubase. Good thing about this uh, unit, uh, it doesn't have any XLRs like I mentioned, but everything's balanced. You can use unbalanced leads. Uh, a balanced lead, it's like a normal jack lead, but I don't know if you can see this, it's got two black rings in it, so it's ring, oh, sorry, ring sleeve and tip, uh, TSR, I think it's the other way around actually tip ring and sleeve regardless these have a better signal better sound quality red is right so you put that in the right and the blue in the left job done uh, what else do I use as an input I have an iPhone lead which is a mini jack connector which can plug into a lot of smartphones probably not the new iPhone because it's ridiculous and I just use this, these RCA plugs again red is right so that's just for reference tracks also I've got a second computer which is actually plugged into another input on this which, which is these leads so I've used yellow as right and I have that as the two track A input because I want to really I don't have a fourth input so this section is currently empty I may use it at some point, I don't know. Right, next, plug in the speakers. So I've got my main Mackies, uh, they have a balanced output, and again it's TRS jacks, so stereo jacks. Red is right, I have those as A, as your main monitors. So plug those in. Uh, I've got my Fostex monitors, just a couple of other leads. Again, the red one is right. And I've got the speakers in the other room, which is this lead, so yeah. All that's left is a power lead. It's a normal kettle lead, so yeah, that goes in. And then turn it on. I'm now going to demonstrate how it works using another camera, so you can see what's going on. Nice. So here are your inputs. To choose an input, you press them, and that turns it on. So currently I only have signal coming through this, which is my main computer, my door. And when there's signal, you can see it. Nice. I would suggest having the volume down for the first time you turn it on to get used to it. This is where you choose your monitors. So that's my other room. This is my small speakers and that's my big speakers. So I'm gonna choose my big speakers and then... Simple. Plug your headphones in, turn these up, easy. Uh, when you've got some volume coming through, hit mute and it mutes it. Very clever. Also dim, makes it quieter. Mono, makes it a mono mix. Mitch, a mono mix. Uh, and talk back, that's just a talk back level, so you can uh, choose whatever you talk back. Now I'm gonna go through the pros and cons of the Mackie Big Knob. Firstly, it's unbelievably simple. The layout is fantastic. Secondly, it's massively versatile. You get to choose between four inputs and you can have them all on at the same time. It's got three outputs. Again, you can have all of those on at the same time. It's got two headphone mixes and you can put those on at the same time to turn everything on, why not? Another good pro, you can have a separate headphone mix. Um, I haven't seen that on that many units. And that's really helpful, you know, if you don't want to adjust your mix and you want the artist to hear whatever they're recording, whatever balance of whatever they want to hear, you can send a separate mix. And that's really helpful. Another couple of pros, 
the mute button, I know it sounds simple, the mono button, just good for checking mixes, and one last thing, the built-in talkback. Uh, it's just really handy to be able to talk to someone. You just press a button, talk, let go, job done. Cons, it's got no XLRs, but who cares? It's got all balanced inputs and outputs anyway, so it's just a matter of using TRS leads, uh, balanced jack leads. Uh, secondly, there's no external talkback mic, so you can't plug one in. It doesn't bother me, to be honest. It's just another thing to get in the way, but that, that may bother some people. Uh, the main thing that is a con about it, it does colour the sound. Um, at low levels, it's not as noticeable as you turn it up. It does, it has some kind of mid-range boost. I'd probably say low mid. It's not the end of the world. I, I mean, I've, I've tried a couple of other audio controllers. Still going to try that one because that one's uh, the SM Pro Audio, sorry, one. That one's passive and this one's active. Uh, I've heard that one's clearer, but I sort of don't care. I may just sell that and keep the Mackie Big Knob just because I love it. I don't care it colours the sound a bit, I can get used to it. Nothing's going to colour the sound more than my old Fostex monitors, which must have had an EQ curve like a mountain, had no low end, no top end, and just all awful mid. And I got used to mixing on those, so. This is fantastic in comparison. So in summary, what a good unit. I know it's the old one, the new one I imagine is just as good. It does colour the sound, a bit of a downside, but you'll get used to it. I'm not being funny, whatever monitors you're using, unless you're using really expensive ones, probably colour the sound anyway. Um, no XLRs, not the end of the world. They probably couldn't fit them due to the space. Uh, no talkback mic, who actually cares? It's fantastic, honestly. That separate headphone mix is one of my favourite things. I need three sets of outputs, and not many have three sets of outputs. Um, so for me, that's that's one of the reasons I love this one. Four inputs is too many for me, but you know, three, I use three. So yeah, I definitely recommend buying one. Um, and I do, I'm a mixing desk person, I did love mixing desk. The Mackie mixing desk, oddly, very transparent compared to this. Uh, it just took up too much space. Um, obviously, I cut one of mine up, framed it, and it, it is now my desk. So I still have a mixing desk. It's just under this sheet of glass and will never work again. But yeah, I'm going to stick with this. And I love it. So, buy one. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, tell everyone. Hit the bell button so it notifies you. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you use. And um, yeah, it'd be good to hear from you. Thank you.